So section 2.2 is surface area. Um, this is going to be a bit of a longer video just because we have a lot of examples to get through. And the first thing again, use your data sheets. For surface area, for data sheet, data sheets, there's a very good section. If you scroll down, scroll down or turn your page, turn your page, um, almost at the end, there's all these geometric figures, which is what you want. I'm going to decrease the size here. So now you can see all the, we got cylinders, we have the sphere, the cone, the square pyramid, and the rectangular prism. All of the surface area formulas are given right here. You have surface area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And over here you have volume. Volume is the area of the base times the height. If you're wondering what the area of the base is, it's right over here, which is pi r squared. So area of the base, that's what that little um, subscript means, is that's what the area is of. So for the first question here, we are dealing with the area of, or surface area of a prism, rectangular prism. Some people like to call them cubes. Um, a cube is if it's squared on all sides. So rectangular prisms have surface area two length times width, plus two length times height, plus two width times height. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you call your length, width, or height, but in this case, we'll call this length, we'll call that width, I'll call this one over here height. So let's work through this. So first thing I have is two times length times width. Basically just a bit of calculator work. Um, two times my length, which is 30, times my width, which is 12. So I get 720 plus, then I have two times my length is 30, times my height is 18, 1080 plus two, times my width, which is 12, times my height, which is 18, 432. Now, why am I multiplying every one of these things by two? Because basically there's two surfaces for each one, right? So two length times width, length times width, is like the bottom, but there's also a top. So that's why I multiply by two. What about length times height? Length times height is this length times the height. So I'm looking at the front face, but there's also a back face. So I multiply by two. And finally, two width times height. Width is the side here, height is there. So I'm basically looking at the ends, the two sides, which are, there's two of them again. Once I have all my values, I add them all together. So I got 432 plus 1080 plus 720, which gets me 2,232. What are the units of this? They are inches. I'm looking at area, so it's squared. Don't forget your units. That's a, cute, or a rectangular prism. Next one we have is a uh, cylinder. So this cylinder, again, you can check on your data sheets. There's my cylinder. Here's my surface area formula. So I've written it down already. And next thing I have to do is just figure out what's going on here. So 2 times pi times radius squared. Hmm, where's the radius? Here they give me diameter. Oh, right. I remember that radius is just half of the diameter right? Radius is half of the diameter. The diameter goes straight across. Radius just goes from the center to the edge. Next thing I have to do is I have to multiply by, I have to square it first, which is going to be 100. Then I multiply by pi. On your calculator, you have a pi button. Use your pi button. For the provincial exam, for all the questions in the book, it assumes that you're using your pi button, not just 3.14. You can't use 3.14. Your pi button goes to many, many, many more decimal places than just that, right? So first thing I do is I have to do my squared first because of order of operations. So I have 100 because 10 squared is 100 times pi times 2. And then I have that answer there, which is 628 point. We'll round to the nearest 100. So 628.32. 628.32 plus, then I have 2 pi r times height. My height is 45. So I have 2. This time there's no squared, so I can just multiply straight across. Times pi times my radius, which is 10, times my height, which is 45. Again, round to the nearest hundredth. So 2827.43. 2827.43. Lastly, I just add those two values together, plus my 628.32, and I get an answer of 3455.
0.75. And the units are centimeters. I'm dealing with area again, so it's squared. So that's a cylinder. Next one I have here is what's called a rectangular pyramid. It's a pyramid because it comes to a peak. It's rectangular because the base is rectangular. So these are probably the most complex ones. You also have square pyramids, which are a bit easier, um, but this one's a rectangular pyramid. So here's the formula here, and I just got this right off the data sheet. Um, this is a square-based pyramid. Do they have the rectangular one? Most of the ones you deal with are, are just square. So there's the surface area for a square, much, much easier. Um, this one I'll go through is a little bit more difficult, but same kind of concept. So I have length times width. Well, what's that? Well, let's look here. That could be the bottom. So that's the square or the rectangular portion. Then I have two times one half length times side one. Which one's side one? It doesn't matter, pick one. So let's say that's side one, that one's side two. Why am I multiplying it by a half? Well, because the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. Base times the height. Why am I multiplying by two? Because I have a triangle in the front and I have the same triangle in the back. Okay, let's go through this. Two times length times width, or just length times width. So 11 times 10 is 110 plus, next thing I have is I have my length times my side one. So that's my side one times my length. So I have 11 times 14 Multiply by a half is the same as dividing by 2, and then I'm going to times it by 2. So in essence, I'm getting back to what I had, because 2 times a half is just 1. So 2 times a half kind of negates each other. So plus 154. And the last one I have is, side 2 is up here, 12. So 12 times my width, which is 10. And see, 120, that's what our final answer will be, but we'll just still divide it by 2, and then times it by 2, just to finish off the formula, which is 120. Notice that for a square pyramid, a square-based pyramid, it's much, much, much easier, right? We just have one base because the bases are exactly the same. Um, so we just, and, and the triangles are going to be all the same. So we could take um, base times the slant height divided by 2 times 4, but if we're dividing it by 2, timesing it by 4 is the same thing as multiplying it by 2. Right? Dividing by 2, or, sorry, multiplying by 4 and dividing by 2 because each one has to divide by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 2. And then base squared is just the base area. So I add all these values together. I have 120 plus 154 plus 110 is equal to 384. And the units for that is feet and we're dealing with area, so it's squared. Next one here I have is a cone. Again, I just took this right off your data sheet. Surface area for a cone. Um, this time I have slant height, I have the height of the whole thing, and I have a radius. So lots of stuff going on with this one. And again, pi. So first thing I do is look for radius. Okay, good, it's given to me in R, so I don't have to divide by 2. So I just have my radius squared, which is 100 times by pi, which is 314.16. Then the next thing I have is pi rs. So my radius is, or we'll just take pi, times r, which is 10, times my s, which is 43. Oh, we should have checked first of all to see that they're all in the same units. These are in both millimeters, so I don't have to convert anything. And I get 1,350.88. I'm going to add that. I'm going to add that to my 314.16 to get my total surface area of 1665. I'll round off to the nearest hundred. 0, 4. 1665.04. The units are millimeters, and we're dealing with area, so it's squared. Okay, we'll keep going here, a few more examples. So finding the unknown length. So, so far what we did in the previous ones was basically just go straight to the formulas, 
we were given all the information that we needed and we worked it out and found out what the surface area was. This time we're dealing with finding the unknown length, which is a little more different or difficult. Um, what they do is they give you all the measurements. They usually give you the surface area or the volume for next chapter. And they give you one of the ones that they, they say it's missing. So in this case, we're trying to find the height. Sometimes they give you, you have to find the radius. So we have to work from the formula. So what's the formula again for a cylinder? Now let's check here. Cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. We go back. 2 pi r squared is 13 squared plus 2 pi r is 13. H, I don't know. So I'm going to have to be solving for H, so we're going to have to do some algebra. Next thing I can see is, well, this is my surface area, is 59, right? So this here can actually be replaced with 59. So I get a formula of 59 equals, let's work some of this out now. 13 squared is 169 times pi times 2. Don't forget to always use your pi button. So I get 1061.86. 1061.86 plus, let's look at this value, 2 pi r h. All right, so 2 pi r h, I get 2 times pi times 13 is 81.68. So I get 81.68. And then for my h, I don't know what that is yet. So I have to solve this using algebra. Centimeters height. Just checking here. So what I want to do first of all is subtract off my 1,000. See, I'm worried here because if I subtract off 59 minus 1,061.86, I get a negative answer. Let me just try to work through this here. So negative 1,002.86 equals 81.68. 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h is equal to my surface area. You know what? I made this question up, so I bet you I made my surface area way too small. That's why I'm running into problems here. Because what I'm going to have is a negative height, right? If I divide, now I solve for h, so I get h is equal to, I have to divide by 81, whoops, uh, 0.68 on both sides, 81.68. So I get h is equal to, I get divided by 81.68 is negative 12.28. It doesn't make any sense because if your height, you can't have negative height. But because I made because I made this question up, I should have checked this beforehand. Um, and my surface area is so small. The only way to get a surface area that small based on my dimensions is to have a negative height, which is kind of weird. But that's okay. Let's go on to the next question. So <laughs> let's go on to the sphere. That the method is exactly the same though. Make sure you replace the surface area with what's given to you. That you'll never end up with a negative answer, but that's okay and then solve using algebra, right? I had to subtract 1,061 on both sides and then divided by my value in front of h. This one I think will work out fine. So surface area for a sphere, again, check your data sheets. Here's a sphere, pi times diameter squared. So this is equal to pi times diameter squared. <clears throat> Surface area, again, I can replace with 100. So this becomes 100 equals pi times diameter squared. First thing I have to do is get rid of my pi, so I divide by pi. So I take 100 divided by pi, which is 31.8, which is equal to my diameter squared. What am I looking for? Oh yeah, radius, okay. Next thing I have to do is I have to solve for diameter. I have diameter squared. The opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. 
that's going to negate the squared. So I have to take the square root of both the left, the right side and the left side. So I take the square root, I get 5.64, which is my diameter. I want my radius, so I have to divide by 2. So I get 2.82 is equal to my radius. So the last one didn't really work out. I got a negative height, but that's okay. The method is exactly the same. And this one here, again, the method works through it. This one only depends on the diameter, so it's a little bit easier. And ask, look what they're asking for, right? If they're looking for radius, you have diameter, divide by 2. And that's it for this lesson. Um, if you have any questions on this one, just email me. Let me know. Sorry it didn't work out exactly as I planned.